Mr. Takaya. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Aloha, General Campbell. Thank you for your service uh, in Afghanistan and candor with this committee. As we make adjustments to our funding commitments in Afghanistan in light of the budget pressures, what metrics are we measuring the Afghan national defense and security forces capabilities such that we can reduce our support? So again, a lot of that is uh, when we first started there, and I, I said we were in the 12 to $13 billion range. Uh, we were building a lot of infrastructure. We were providing a lot of equipment, arms. Uh, we don't have to do that now. So we just have to provide really, uh, we look at providing life, life uh, cycle sustainment. So that's really cut down the amount of money, and we'll continue to work through that. As, as we deal with the Afghan forces on the, the monetary piece, we do look at making sure they understand, uh, you know, what's very tough for us, PBB and E, um, uh, which is really the planning, programming, budgeting, execution. We have advisors there, senior level advisors that work with senior level Afghans on budgeting, on programming, on their procurement. Uh, President Ghani chairs personally, and Dr. Abdullah chairs personally a procurement meeting every, every Saturday night. It goes two or three hours as they work on how they can cut out corruption, how they can get the right kind of contracts in there. Uh, he's definitely taking that on as, you know, trying to help cut out corruption. So that's going to help us continue to bring down. But we have to build our capability in that. And, and in the past where many of our, you know, our, our weapon systems were our young men and women out there uh, fighting every day, uh, Shona by Shona, side by side, shoulder by shoulder with them, now our weapon systems are our senior advisors, senior civilians that come over, senior military folks of all our services that work in the very tough areas of uh, planning, programming, budgeting, execution, intelligence reforms, transparency and account accountability, uh, rule of law, those, those kind of things. And I think as we continue to build their capability, they'll get more efficient and we can continue to bring down uh, the funding. But we, we use conditions, again, to, to apply pressure to make sure they understand that there is a sense of urgency here, that we got to continue to move forward, um, and they understand that and they want to make changes. But it, it, it is about changing behavior. And so uh, you can't continue to do the same old thing, and you have to apply different ways to, to change behavior. Um, is it fair to suggest that increased support from U.S. contractors will be necessary to supplant the decrease in active duty, duty military support? Sure. We've, we've depended on contractors for years in many critical areas, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, we do offset the number of military on the ground by the number of contractors. We do look at that very hard try to keep that in balance, but uh, I think for the foreseeable future, we'll continue to have to have contractors involved. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. While I know you have rightfully been focused on helping the Afghans fight the Taliban, ISIS, and Al-Qaeda, my other assignment uh, from Hass is the ranking member of the Contracting and the Workforce Subcommittee on the Small Business Committee. I wanted to concentrate for a minute on the U.S. contractors that enable you to perform your mission. Uh, you mentioned them just a few minutes ago some of which participate as small businesses. It is my understanding that they, have, they are having significant challenges in dealing with the Afghan government in a number of areas, such as tax disputes, attaining new or renewing licenses, and generally staying compliant with Afghan law. At some point, these issues will impact you and your successor's ability to perform the mission and reach our objectives. The contractors can't fix this alone. It must be a government-to-government -government solution. What is Resolute Support doing to help facilitate a solution to these challenges? So that's, a, that's the second question brought up on the contractor piece and the issues they may have. Um, I'll go back and make sure we're attuned to that. We do have uh, the BSA and a, and a task force that works both with the Afghans. The Afghans have a piece of that Resolute Support and, and uh, all of the embassies, especially the U.S. on the BSA, work toward that. Uh, the first meeting actually uh, was last week, I think, at a lower level. It'll come to both myself and the Minister of Defense, who will sit those. And these kind of issues, if not worked out a, at a lower level, will then brought, be brought forward. And I'll make sure that we take a hard look uh, on any of the taxing issues or license, licensing issues. Again, I know President Ghani, Dr. Abdullah, are very attuned to making sure that they create opportunities inside of Afghanistan, uh, not only for the Afghans to continue to build up uh, and build business, but also they're going to need help from outside. And if they're doing things that obstruct that, um, and as it impacts on a security perspective, we'll make sure that we get after that. But so I'll, I'll go take a harder deep dive on that and make sure we're, we're, we're addressing that fully. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe the bilateral security agreement and the NDAA says that these types of taxes are improper. In fact, I just met, uh, we just met recently with a company that says that they have 
are facing a $63 million tax bill. So this is a big issue that needs to be resolved. So if you can get back to us, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Bridenstine.